Welcome to the College of Education 10-Minute Research Break, a podcast devoted to highlighting research by Illinois State University's College of Education faculty, staff, and students. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and take a break with us. Hello, I'm Tricia Class, the host. Today's guest is Erin McCulick, Assistant Professor in the Curriculum and Instruction Department. She teaches secondary methods at Illinois State University, and her research interests include the development of teacher identity, the teaching of classroom management, and the use of alternative clinical experiences in teacher education. Her article relates to pre-service teachers' awareness of the issues of self-disclosure on social networking sites. Welcome, Erin. Hello. Thanks for taking the time to talk about this sure. recent article. Very interesting. Thanks for having me here. Um, in your scud- study, you discuss the need for teacher educators to help students with the transition from college student to the professional on many levels. In particular, you note that these students need to understand the professional, ethical, and legal issues related to social networking. Can you summarize what researchers are noting that are some of the key issues in these areas? Sure. I think one of the things that really jumped out to me when I started this study was how there's a lot of research out there about using social networking sites in your class to work with students and take care of things in your class, but there's not a lot of discussion about or there's starting to be more discussion about how it reflects on you as a professional. Um, And I think one of the biggest issues, especially with pre-service teachers, is sort of that jump from, like you mentioned, student to professional and understanding that what's acceptable now in your life as a college student may not be acceptable as a professional, especially as a teacher, um, once you're gone from college and once you're hired. Um, there's been a number of legal cases. There was a case um, out in Pennsylvania where a student was dismissed from her student teaching position, and the state did not give her a license um, simply because of a picture she had posted on her MySpace account. Wow. Um, and there have been dismissals of practicing teachers um, who have said, you know, made comments about their students on Facebook or just things in their personal life. There was um, a, one of those articles that my students and my participants read in the study um, was about a teacher in Ohio who posted pictures of his butt art on Facebook <laughs> and um, came up as, against some legal issues for that. <laughs> and so, you know, there's professional issues and then, you know, your private life is also on display. And as a public servant, as a teacher, that's something that pre-service teachers definitely need to be aware of. Yeah, so all those ethics, common sense, mm-hmm. and, and, <laughs> and legal all come together. Uh-huh. Can you describe your research design in terms of your pre-intervention, your intervention, and your post-intervention strategies sure. with these students? Sure. Um, what I was really interested in knowing is what they're understanding Understandings were of how sensitive a topic this is um, before we did anything. So I'm my assumption was that they all had social networking sites was a good assumption, mm-hmm. um, you know. And they're in college, and of course, there's certain behaviors that we see a lot in college. Um, so I wanted to know pre-intervention what what they knew. So I asked them questions about how often they use it. Well, do they have one? What are the, their security settings? How often do they post? Those sorts of things. Um, and then also with the pre-intervention, they had some Likert scale items. So For example, social networking sites such as Facebook and MySpace are a good way for high school teachers to communicate with their students. There were 14 of those items. Um, And so I really wanted to get a handle of what they thought before we did the intervention. And so that was our approach. And then the intervention was they read a number of articles. And the articles, the first one was out of the NEA Today magazine, which was a summary of all the things that teachers have done to get themselves fired. And then I found a bunch of other ones as well, different newspaper stories, Um, things including there were teachers in Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina that were posting comments about their students on Facebook that got them into trouble. There was a principal in Canada whose wife posted a nude picture of him from their vacation and he was dismissed. Um, So just sort of all sorts of different aspects of what teachers have done um, and the ramifications of doing that. And then the post-intervention was the similar survey, sort of asking what have you learned from this? What are your ideas about using social networking sites and the same Likert scale items as well? Okay. And in your findings, you discussed four common themes in the pre-intervention open-ended questions, Mm -hmm. and then some changes in the open-ended post-intervention reflections. Right. Um, Can you discuss those? Sure. So initially, their initial survey where I was just kind of wanting to know, what do you think about using social Mm -hmm. networking sites as a teacher? Um, 65% reported that they thought it was acceptable as long as they maintained high levels of professionalism. Um, They didn't give very 
detailed specific details about what that meant, but they knew that they needed a high level of professionalism. Um, 38% of them thought it was okay to communicate, use it to communicate with students if they kept a separate page different from their personal one. Um, 37% thought that teachers needed to understand, you know, that there are some issues that can come along with this. So some of the participants had already heard about some things or um, maybe thought it wasn't a good idea. Uh, and then it was interesting, 15% thought it was not appropriate to use social networking sites, period, um, either with students or that, you know, once they became a teacher, they thought it would go, they would delete it because there was just too much risk. So there was some, some awareness of it um, in the pre-intervention, I okay. would say. Um, and then afterwards, 35% of them said that, you know, their ideas really hadn't changed that much, that it was just common sense. But 65% said that absolutely, <laughs> they definitely had some new things to think about. And they hadn't considered before that something that someone else posts on their page can reflect poorly on them, or if someone tags them in a photo, that that can be an issue for them. Um, and what was really interesting in the post-intervention was that 35% of the participants, there were 68 participants total, took action on their page voluntarily. That was not part of the study. <laughs> that was not part of any requirements. But they went through and deleted photos. They updated security settings. They took their last name off. They made it a little diff more difficult for people to find them. Some students reported that they had their phone numbers and their home addresses on there um, and thought, wow, as a teacher, I don't, my students, you know, shouldn't have that information. Um, one person even wrote that he had this friend that would usually post really inappropriate jokes and he just deleted the friend and said, you know, I can't have you doing this. So I thought that was really interesting that, you know, they were not asked to do anything, but after reading this, they said, oh, wow, I better look at this again. Now, the other thing I was interested in is, did you find any useful results based on the Likert scale items in terms of, I know they were, it was the overall picture, but were there any particular items or findings that professional educators should know to address in their classes of student teachers? Um, it was interesting. With the Likert scale items, there was some change, but none of any statistical significance except for one. And that one was the item, it is okay to use Facebook applications such as Yeovil or Cafe World, those are little games, mm -hmm. um, with students because it develops positive rapport that will carry over into the classroom. And initially, the participants thought that, hey, you know, that that's a, that's a good idea. That's a way to, you know, kind of connect with my students. Um, but then afterwards, in our in-class discussions, after they read the articles, um, they were talking about how they never realized that that could be viewed as favoritism or that it would blur the line between, thank you for sending me a sheep in Farmville, but you still should not be talking while I'm talking in class sort of a thing. And so, ironically, out of 14 of the Likert scale mm -hmm. items, that was the one that had a, a change that was statistically significant. Now, do you have any follow-up either research or teaching plans related to this study? Now that you've learned this, what are you doing as either a teacher or a researcher? Um, well, as a teacher, we use the articles in my CNI 212 class, which is sort of the introductory mm -hmm. class. Our first unit in the course is becoming a teacher and what that means. So we read these articles and we have a good class discussion about them. Um, and then research-wise, one thing I've become interested in is the technology is changing faster than policymakers can keep up with it and cases are cropping up and there's not a lot of legal basis for it for them. And so I've become interested in finding the policies that districts and states are putting in place in response to this. Some are saying if you're going to work for the school district, you will not have a Facebook site professionally or personally. Some have other parameters. So I'm looking at that right now to see what the response is in terms of from the districts and administration. And you were just talking to me about someone in Virginia contacting you? About yes, I actually, yeah, I got an email this morning from someone in Virginia who shares a similar interest. So we're going to meet at the AERA conference in the spring and see what we can collaborate on together. I'm really excited about that. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. So, well, thank you so much. And this is timely. I've got to now check my face. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed being here. Oh, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. The full citation for today's research article is McHulick, 2012, Professional Faces, Pre-Service Secondary Teachers' Awareness of Issues of Self-Disclosure on Social Networking Sites, from Current Issues in Education, Volume 15, Number 3. The citation can also be found at the website coe.ilstu.edu slash research slash podcast. Thank you, and join us for future Research Break podcasts. 
This podcast is sponsored by Illinois State University's College of Education, where we strive to assure that all students realize the democratic ideal through our teaching, research, and service to the field of education.